Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Bibliophiles, a show from the Ann Arbor District Library that's all about books. Each episode, we pick a book on a certain theme, and we don't tell each other what we're reading, and we get together for the episode for the Grand Reveal. This time, the books we are reading are all banned or challenged. My name's Christopher, and I'm here, as always, with Amanda and Lucy, and let's get started and find out what books we all read. Lucy, what did you pick for us this time? Um, so I picked a graphic novel because I love graphic novels. And this is a middle grade graphic novel. It's by Kathy G. Johnson. It's called The Breakaways. And I think I've actually read it like th three times now. I would read it earlier and then I read it again for this. And I was like looking at it again this morning. Um, but it is such a lovely, sweet book about a group of middle school girls on a soccer team. Um, the main the main character is named Faith. She's just starting fifth grade, but it's like in a middle school. She wants to fit in, and um, she's encouraged in the beginning by this popular girl to sign up for soccer. And she's like, okay, I guess. I've never played soccer. So she signs up for soccer, and she gets to soccer. That popular girl is like on the A team. Faith ends up on the C team called the Bloodhounds. So the Bloodhounds are the main characters in this book and they are great. And they, they're they also different and diverse and interesting. And they're really bad at soccer, but they're like learning how to navigate friendship and they're getting pretty good at that. Um, so basically it's like a book about friendship and like just how lovely it can be. And um, these really level level lovable characters and there are um some issues like i think it was it's geared towards like 18 8 to 14 year olds um but at least in one district in texas texas they banned it in all of the elementary schools oh in houston because it was not age appropriate and the reason that a parent complained is there's a there's a scene in the book it's like one of the sweetest scenes there's a soccer player, a girl named Marie, and she's having a sleepover with Sammy, another person on the team. And they're just like talking. They're really good friends. They're like, I like you so much. And then Sammy's like, you know, I think I'm a boy. And does and Marie doesn't say anything. And Sammy's like, ha ha ha, just kidding. And then Marie's like, no, no, that I just didn't know what to say. But yes, I think you are a boy. And then like, it's just this beautiful moment of Sammy kind of coming out as trans. And then they share this sweet little kiss. And it's like, I don't know, it just, it's really it kind of gives you the feels, you know, and like, it makes me sad that that's, there's a, you know, that kind of thing just keeps a book out of all the libraries. Um, I think that parents said it was just not age appropriate to have sleepovers like that. Um, there's another girl who comes out as queer. And so the wording probably was not so direct, but those are definitely the reasons why I think it was kept out of libraries, which is too bad because it's a really sweet story. It's a great story about friendship, about all different kinds of people um, finding ways to connect and be friends. And it is just, it's funny and um, it's, yeah, I love it, obviously, because I read it like three times. So that is the Breakaways by Kathy C. Johnson, a middle grade graphic novel that has been banned or challenged, at least. Amanda, what did you pick? Well, I also picked a graphic novel. I've actually had Breakaways on my list for a while. So I love it when you bring a middle grade graphic novel. I'm like, okay, Lucy's in our comfort area. She's reading middle grade graphic novels. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, so the book I read, I know Lucy's read this one. I read a graphic novel called Flamer by Mike Curado. Yes, I was going to say Cortado, Mike Curado, and the book was published in 2020, and it's a teen graphic novel, and all of the illustrations in the book are black and white, except there are some moments where there's these dark reds and oranges that are peppered through in certain scenes that have significance. Um, it adds a little extra layer of emotion. I always like it with graphic novels. They pay attention to not only the words, but also the visuals that the author is using to tell the story or the illustrator. It's just amazing. And that's one of my favorite things about graphic novels. Um, and this has some light in it and some dark in it, both color and in word. Um, so this book, it is set in 1995. It centers on a 14 year old boy named Aiden. Aiden is at a 
sleepaway camp for scouts. It is summer. I think it's the last week of their camp. And it's the summer between middle school. He's there. He's heading into high school. So there's that fear in his head and in many heads of the other boys that are at the camp as well. Um, he, he normally likes camp. He likes doing all the scout stuff. He has some good friends. But this year, he's in this moment of like transition and change in his mind, in his body, in his soul, everything. And he's got a lot of challenges going on. His He is challenged for his sexuality, his faith, and his race. And it's a camp where there's all these teenage boys. So they are just running their mouths. He's got a bunch of bullies. He gets bullied for being chubby, for being Filipino, for being effeminate. And through all of these scenes of being at this camp, whether they're making fires or singing songs or doing their bow and arrow practice. He's there are these group of bullies who are constantly attacking him with these, um, these homophobic slurs, these racial slurs. And it all just builds up. This fire is just burning inside of him because he just can't take it anymore. He doesn't feel like he's accepted anywhere. He inevitably doesn't feel like he's loved or wanted in anywhere. He has a crush on one of the boys there and that does not go well because it is unrequited. Um, so all of this builds up inside him. So this poor kid, he ends up with these suicidal thoughts. So there is some darkness to this book. Um, but one of the reasons the author wanted to write it be was because he wanted to have this book out there where there are other young people who are in this vulnerable place to have, uh, something to look to or something that would be inspiring or just to know that it's going to be okay. Because inevitably, no spoiler, like Aiden does, he doesn't quite figure it out. He's still 14. He's still in the same space he was, but he, he relies on a few people, he gets information and he's able to overcome like those dark thoughts at this moment and then move forward and get ready to go to, to high school, which is a whole other, you know, you just feel for, you just feel for this 14 year old kid going through all of this stuff. It's just, it's just a lot. It's emotional. Um, it's also, it's funny. I have not been in a locker room that was all 14 year old boys before. So this book, it, some of the reasons it was challenged was um, the obvious, the LGBTQ um, subject matter. Again, these are a bunch of boys. There's like a lot of like, you know, just gross, like penis jokes and just like toxic masculinity. And there's, there are parts where there's um, like masturbation is referenced or porn is referenced, but they're not like visuals. You worry about those things with a crap or some people might worry about those things with a graphic novel. They're not like visual. They're just, they're there because there's a bunch of 14 year old kids hanging out. So these are some of the problems that some of the people found with the book, but the author is having none of that. He wanted to have this book out there so that other kids who are in this like dark and vulnerable spot just had something to know that, Hey, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. You are who you are and it's important for you to be here. So I just thought it was a really great message and I'm really glad I finally read the book. So that is Flamer by Mike Curado. Christopher, what did you pick for us? Graphic novel? <laughs> <laughs> Not a graphic novel. I read Me and Earl and the Dying Girl and I have not seen the movie, but I did read the book and really enjoyed it. So it is about uh, it's about a trio of high school characters. I think his name is Greg, and then there's Earl, and there is oh my goodness, I read it a little while ago, and I don't recall the dying girl's name right off the top of my head. Uh, big spoiler. She really does die. So let's get that out of the way right up front. Sorry if you haven't seen the movie or read the book. But that's part of what I loved about it. It doesn't pull any punches. The author frequently makes a comment about if this was a Hollywood magical movie, this is where we would fall deeply in love and things would be perfect. Well, it's not and they don't. So the main character is very flawed. He bumbles his way through all these half relationships and these attempts to get with uh to get a girlfriend earl uh comes from a very troubled home he's really left to fend for himself and uh the dying girl uh gets sicker she's moody she dies and she feels bad about everyone else being able to carry on with their life while she doesn't have any prospects for the future. It sounds really depressing and parts of it are sad, but overall, it's really a different book. Parts really made me laugh. The reason it was banned and challenged was mostly because of one particular passage that's really lewd and gross and kind of dumb boy humor. The author even says, 
in isolation, this looks pretty bad. But uh, having been a boy myself, you know, boys say a lot of dumb things. And uh, I, I didn't really take it that seriously. I also wondered if part of the challenge aspect of this book is because preceding that one passage is another passage about it refers to a bunch of church kids in high school and doesn't portray them all that positively. And I just wondered if there could be a connection there. So I really enjoyed the book. I haven't seen the movie. I do plan on watching it and I look forward to it. Uh, I wondered if either of you two have read this book. I have, I have read it and I also saw the movie and I thought the movie was really good. Um, I cried a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I read it, but I don't, I read it like closer to when it came out. I feel like it's yeah. like 10 years old. I feel like yeah. it's a little bit older. I read it when it came out and I honestly don't remember if I saw the movie or not. Nick uh, Offerman's in the movie. He's the um, dad. I think he does a great job. And one of the things I remember about the movie ha is how well they balanced like the humor with this very sad story um that they didn't shy away from right. this interesting thing about all three of these books that we're talking about it's like they all have things in them that that young that teens and kids really need to be able to see in books you know like see themselves reflected see conflicting emotions being reflected even read where people are saying dumb stuff because they maybe they're like hey i said something dumb and look you know um and so it's just i think um too bad that <laughs> they take away books like this so they don't get that chance but yeah one yeah. thing i didn't mention one of the reasons one of the main reasons also for this one ban and challenge was because of the, the idea of suicide that like if they were the the idealized suicide part and that was a big thing for mm -hmm. some of the people who were banning mm -hmm. and challenging it and i had a hard time deciding what book i wanted to bring to share today because i feel like there's been a bunch of books that we've all discussed on this on this show oh, yeah. that have been banned or challenged at some point. And when I was looking through some of the lists that are available online, it's like, okay, I've read like every fourth book. There are so many books that I've read that you don't even think about them as like whatever kind of reader I am. I don't even think about them. But then when you sit down and see the list of what people are seeing about it, 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 it makes you angry because you're like, but wait, those are people who are going through experiences that people you might know are going through, whether it's like mm -hmm. the soccer team or like having a crush on a boy at camp or, you know, like, it's just, it's, it's, it's interesting. So I'm happy we're able to be here and to read these books and to share them with other people. You know, we're in a, we're in a good climate here to be able to do that. We're lucky. Yes, we are. Yeah. The author of my book, uh, Jesse Andrews even said that it's a shame if this book is not in the hands of someone who would ultimately just love reading it because it's a different kind of a book. Parts of it are written using a screenplay format. So uh, because the characters watch so many movies, this kind of screenplay is part of the book as well. And that really makes it fun. Uh, and Jesse Andrews even says, you know, it would be terrible if someone who is not much of a reader or has had trouble finding a book that they really want would not have access to this if it was the book that really turned them on to reading. Um, and I, I can see that. That's a really good point. And it's also, it's always like, just, it seems like, and there's, they're probably there. It's more, it's a bigger theme why people don't want these books on shelves, but it's usually just like, well, there's this sentence or there's this one scene and, you know, it's just, um, you can take something like that out of context. And it's like, you're saying Christopher with that, that one part in the book, but it doesn't represent the whole book and it doesn't represent the whole story. So Well, those are our banned and challenged books for this episode. Uh, as always, we'd love to know what you're reading, whether it's a banned or challenged book or anything else. And you can contact us and leave a comment in the link below. Until next time, happy reading.